Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 12 of the course on multivariate data mining methods and applications. The title of this lecture is regression methods for classification. Now, so far we have considered the regression methods for the models in which your response variable or dependent variable is continuous in nature. Now, sometimes your response variable is not continuous. Say just for example, suppose uh, you want to purchase a house or you have to take decision whether you should purchase a house or not. Now, this decision of purchasing the house depends upon your desire, but of course, you cannot measure the desire to purchase the house. So, in that case, uh, you define some kind of dummy variable, whether you purchase the house or you do not purchase the house. You may assign some value say 1 if you purchase the house and some value say 0 to the decision that you do not purchase the house. Again, whether you purchase the house or not, this decision also depends upon several input variables. For example, what is your income? It depends upon your income. What are your bank savings? How much money you have in fixed deposit or in your saving bank account? So, your bank savings. Then it may also depend upon how much rent you have to pay or price of the house how many family members are there in your family. So, your decision to purchase a house or not depends upon so many input variables. Now, the problem is how to model such kind of variables in terms of input variables. you have some kind of discrete or dichotomous output variable and you have to model it in terms of several input variables. Can you use the simple linear regression model? And if no, then what are the possible alternatives? So, in this lecture we are going to discuss some of the models which can be used when your dummy variable is dichotomous or it is discrete. Now, first we define discrete and limited dependent variable. Uh, dichotomous binary or dummy variables which can take say value 1 or 0 depending upon which of two possible results occur are called dichotomous binary or dummy variables. For example, suppose y i star denotes the tolerance of an insect to a particular insecticide. Obviously, 
you cannot measure the tolerance of the insect. It is unobservable. So, why a star is unobservable? At the most, what you can measure? Whether for a particular amount or a particular dose of insecticide, the insect survives or it dies. So, what we do? We replace yi star which is unobservable by a dummy variable yi which takes value 1 if the ith insect dies and 0 otherwise that is if the ith insect survives. Another example is uh, suppose y i is a variable which takes value 1. If the ith person is employed in a particular week and 0 if he is not employed, then actually these variables are dichotomous variables taking just two values but sometimes you may also have polychotomous variables which take more than two values say y i equal to 1 if the person is in poor health it takes value 2 if the person ith person is in fair health and it takes value 3 if the ith person is in excellent health. So, the health of a person is classified into one of the three classes poor health, fair health and excellent health. Now, in this lecture we will consider different models for dichotomous variables. So, the models which we are going to consider are linear probability model, log it model and probit model. Uh, first, we take the previous example of uh, insect whether the insect dies or not for a particular dose of insecticide. Now, suppose x denotes the amount of insecticide used and y takes value 1 if the insect dies and 0 otherwise. Then expected value of y actually we assume that y depends upon the, the amount of insecticide used. So, expected value of y is some function of say beta naught plus beta 1 x i. Obviously, the predictor y equal to f x this takes values in a discrete set say s. For example, for uh, insect case the s is equal to 0 1 y takes values in this set 0 or 1. So, basically what we want to do? We want to divide the input space into a collection of regions labeled according to the classification. Say so, this is your input space and you want to divide it into two regions if x belongs to this region say then y takes value say 1 and if x belongs to this region then y takes value 0. So, this is your objective. Now, in linear methods for classification 
that is linear classifiers, decision boundaries are linear. Uh, just like here, your decision boundary depends upon beta naught plus beta 1 x i. If this quantity belongs to say R 1, then you say that y equal to 1 and if this belongs to R 2, then y is equal to 0. So, your classification rule is actually linear in this case. Then decision to categorize a set of data points to a discrete class based on a linear combination of its explanatory variables. So, here we, we have taken just one explanatory variable, but you may have more than one explanatory variables also. But in linear methods, basically you depend upon the linear combination of different input variables and on the basis of this linear combination, you decide whether you have to classify y in class say R 1 or in class R 2 or whether y takes value 1 or y takes value 0. Now, formulating a probability model. Now, suppose x is k cross 1 vector of explanatory variables including the intercept term. So, we assume that x also includes the intercept term. and y equal to 1 if unit own a particular character c and it takes value 0 if the unit does not own character c. Say for example, y takes value 1 if the person owns a house and it takes value 0 if the person does not own a house or y takes value 1 if the insect dies or 0 if the insect survives, y equal to 1 if the person is employed in a particular period say in a particular week and it takes value 0 if the person is not employed in a particular week. Now, the probability that y equal to 1 given x is considered as a function of x transpose beta. x transpose beta is equal to x say x 1 beta 1 plus 1 plus x k beta k. Notice that uh, the intercept term is also included here. So, you may take x 1 equal to 1 to incorporate the intercept term and probability that y equal to 0 is equal to 1 minus f x transpose beta. Here this f is called the link function and this link function usually takes values between 0 and 1, because this is a probability and probability should take value between 0 and 1. Then expectation of y given x is equal to how you get expectation of y given x? This is 1 into probability y equal to 1 given x plus 0 into probability y equal to 0 given x. So, this is equal to probability y equal to 1 given x which is f. 
x transpose beta. Now, here is the graphical representation of the probability model. You have input variables here. So, let us take x naught corresponding to the intercept term, which is then you have x 1, x 2, so on x k. Then you have beta naught, beta 1, beta 2, so on beta k. These are the coefficients, corresponding coefficients. And then we combine these input variables with these using these weights. Say you take summation beta j x j. And then we take this function f and we write it equal to say z. And uh, then according to the value of this f or z, we classify y as 1 or 0. For instance, suppose z is greater than c, some constant, then we take y equal to 1 and if it is less than c, then we take y equal to 0. Here this f is your link function, this f. Now, first we consider the linear probability model. Uh, in linear probability model, we retain the linear regression. Means, we take f x transpose beta equal to x transpose beta. Then, we can write y equal to x transpose beta plus y minus expectation y given x. Actually, what is expectation of y given x? This is equal to f x transpose beta or here you are taking it equal to x transpose beta. So, we are subtracting x transpose beta here and then we are adding x transpose beta here. And then we write this part equal to u the difference between the actual value of y and the expected value of y given x. So, y is equal to x transpose beta plus u. So, this is just like your multiple linear regression model. Further, variance of u given x is equal to, now u takes value 1 minus x transpose beta when y is equal to 1. So, we take 1 minus x transpose beta whole square into the probability that y equal to 1 plus u takes value minus x transpose beta when y is equal to 0. So, we take minus x transpose beta square or x transpose beta square into 1 minus probability that y equal to 1, which is same as the probability that y equal to 0. Now, this probability, probability y equal to 1 given x is same as expectation of y given x. What is expectation of y given x? This is equal to 1 into probability y equal to 1 given x plus 0 into probability y equal to 0 given x. So, ultimately you get probability y equal to 1 given x equal to expectation of y given x and expectation of y given x is x transpose beta. So, we substitute the value of this probability here. So, you get 1 minus x transpose beta whole square into x transpose beta plus 
x transpose beta whole square into 1 minus x transpose beta and then we solve it. We just take x transpose beta into 1 minus x transpose beta common and then inside you get 1 minus x transpose beta plus x transpose beta which is 1. So, ultimately you get this expression. Now, if we are using linear probability model, then there is no guarantee that the predicted value which is x transpose beta head lies between 0 and 1. Say suppose you are estimating beta by beta head, then there is no guarantee that this quantity lies between 0 and 1. Further, variance of u given x can be negative also. Look at this expression say 1 minus x transpose beta or x transpose beta may be negative also. So, that is why we do not use linear probability model in classification problems. It is not frequently used. Now, some of the requirements for a probability model are f x transpose beta lies between 0 and 1. Then limit x transpose beta tends to infinity f x transpose beta should be equal to 1 and limit x transpose beta tending to minus infinity f x transpose beta is 0. So, these are the conditions which the function f, the link function f must satisfy for the proper probability model. Obviously, the linear probability model which we have considered before does not satisfy these conditions. In fact, if you take any continuous probability distribution or f is the cumulative distribution function of any continuous probability distribution, then it satisfies these conditions. Any CDF satisfies these conditions. Now, some of the most frequently used models are the log it model, link function of which is defined as f x transpose beta equal to exponential x transpose beta upon 1 plus exponential x transpose beta or you may write it equal to capital lambda x transpose beta. Say. Now, another probability model is probit model. Probit model f x transpose beta is capital phi x transpose beta which is equal to integral from minus infinity to x transpose beta and inside you have the probability density function of a standard normal distribution. So, this capital phi is actually the CDF of normal distribution, standard normal distribution and some other models which one can use in practice are the link function based on viable model or the link function based on log log model. So, log it model is based on logistic distribution and the probit model is based on normal distribution. And uh, these two distributions are actually very similar to each other in nature except in the tail region. So, in tail regions the two distributions behave differently, but in the middle region the two distributions are very similar to each other. Say logistic distribution has heavier tails than the normal distribution and for intermediate values of x transpose beta say between minus 1.2 to 1.2. the two distributions give almost similar probabilities and when x transpose beta is extremely small 
much smaller than minus 1.2. The logistic distribution gives larger probability to y equal to 0 in comparison to the probit model or the normal distribution. Then it gives a smaller probabilities to y equal to 0 when x transpose beta is extremely large. Say if it is much larger than 1.2, then logistic distribution gives much smaller probabilities to y equal to 0 than the normal distribution. Further, if the observations have very few responses y equal to 1 or very few non responses y equal to 0. So, the observations have one of the two extreme cases means either y equal to 1 are very few or y equal to 0 are very few. In that case, the two models give different predictions. But if uh, the number of responses say y equal to 1 and y equal to 0 are not very different, then the two models give almost similar kind of picture or almost similar kind of predictions. Now, we consider the regression for probability model. So, we take expectation of y given x equal to f x transpose beta. Then we define the marginal effect as del o del x expectation of y given x. So, this marginal effect gives you the rate of change in expected value of y with respect to x and to obtain this differential coefficient what we do we differentiate this function with, with respect to x. So, what we get say small f x transpose beta small f x transpose beta is the differential coefficient of capital F and then we differentiate x transpose beta with respect to x. So, we get beta del o del x x transpose beta is equal to beta. So, this is the marginal effect here f t is equal to del o del t capital F t. So, this is the density function corresponding to capital F t. For instance, in logit model your expectation of y given x is of the form lambda x transpose beta, where lambda x transpose beta is equal to exponential x transpose beta divided by 1 plus exponential x transpose beta and then we differentiate it. So, the differential coefficient is or uh, instead of x transpose beta we simply take t say. We differentiate lambda t here. Differential coefficient of lambda t is first we differentiate this uh, you get e to the power t upon 1 plus e to the power t minus e to the power t upon 1 plus e to the power t whole square and uh, then we differentiate this part. So, you get e to the power 2 t here and then we solve it. So, we take 1 plus e to the power t whole square in the denominator and in the numerator you get e to the power t plus e to the power 2 t minus e to the power 2 t, e to the power 2 t will cancel out. So, ultimately you get e to the power t upon 
1 plus e to the power t whole square which is equal to lambda t 1 minus lambda t. So, ultimately you get this expression for the marginal effect in log it model. Similarly, for probit model the marginal effect is a small phi x transpose beta into beta, where a small phi denotes the probability density function of standard normal distribution. So, these marginal, marginal effects depend upon the value of x. Then we consider log it model and then how to estimate the parameters of log it model. Suppose y1, y2, yn these are n observations on binary response variable. Then xi which is k cross 1 where i ranges from 1 to n these are observations on input variables. Then we take f x i transpose beta equal to probability y i equal to 1 and we write it equal to say p i equal to exponential x i transpose beta upon 1 plus exponential x i transpose beta and then we write it equal to lambda x i transpose beta which is equivalent to capital lambda i. Now, this ensures that probability y i equal to 1 lies between 0 and 1. You can easily verify that this function lies between 0 and 1. Now, suppose we take log of p i upon 1 minus p i. Now, what is p i upon 1 minus p i? This is actually equal to exponential x i transpose beta and if we take log of this, we take natural logarithm here, then it is equal to x i transpose beta. and we write it equal to capital L i. Now, suppose uh, you have to estimate beta and you have grouped data say out of n i observations corresponding to x i. So, corresponding to x i you have multiple observations say capital n i observations. For example, you test a particular dose of insecticide on say 10 insects, then that particular dose of insecticide is x i and in that case capital N i is equal to 10. And suppose out of those 10 insects, say 4 die and 6 survive. So, a small n i is equal to 4, n i times y i is 1 and in that case we estimate p i by p i head equal to small n i upon capital n i. Say what is the probability that an insect dies for that particular dose? your empirical probability is 4 upon 10 a small n i upon capital N i. So, you can say that L i head is equal to log p i head upon 1 minus p i head and then we write it equal to x i transpose beta plus u i. Then for large n i Variance of u i is approximately equal to 1 upon n i p i into 1 minus p i. Then suppose you define w i head equal to n i into p i head into 1 minus p i head and then we multiply the entire model by under root w i head and 
reason for doing this kind of transformation is that in the original model all the UIs have different variances. This variance involves I also the expression for variance of UI. So, the errors are heteroscedastic. To make the errors homoscedastic, that is, all the errors having the same variance, we multiply by this quantity under root wi hat, and then you have this model li star equal to xi star transpose beta plus ui star. And then you combine all the observations for all i equal to 1 to small n, we combine or we write the observations in vector form and we get this model L star equal to x star beta plus u star. Then you can apply the least to square procedure for estimating beta. Say beta head equal to x star transpose x star inverse x star transpose L star. Uh, one can also use the method of maximum likelihood for estimating the parameters. So, is, suppose this is the observation vector of binary response variables and uh, x is n cross k matrix of observations on input variables. Then you can write the likelihood function in this form. Some product i equal to 1 to n f x i transpose beta to the power y i 1 minus f x i transpose beta to the power 1 minus y i. In fact, uh, y i is just like a Bernoulli trial, it takes value 1 or 0, it takes one value 1 with probability say p i and y i takes value 0 with probability 1 minus p i and p i is equal to f x i transpose beta. And then log of likelihood function can be written in this form and uh, then you have to obtain or you have to estimate beta which maximizes this log likelihood function. So, suppose capital F i is f x i transpose beta and small f i is the differential coefficient of capital F. Then we differentiate the log likelihood log L with respect to beta and you obtain this differential coefficient just by differentiating the log likelihood you get this expression and then you write it equal to 0 or you get this relation. For log it model you write f i equal to lambda i and small f i equal to lambda i 1 minus lambda i then small f i upon capital F i is equal to 1 minus lambda i, you can easily verify it. And small f i upon capital F i into 1 minus capital F i is equal to 1. Then uh, the differential coefficient of log L with respect to beta is equal to summation over i y i minus lambda i into x i. So, you can easily get this differential coefficient. And then we also obtain the matrix of second derivatives, say you write h equal to del 2 or del beta del beta transpose log L or del or del beta transpose, this is the first differential coefficient which you have obtained here and then you get this expression. So, this is the second derivative. What you have to do? You have to differentiate lambda i with respect to beta. 
and then you get this expression. Now, the Hessian matrix H does not involve y i and it is negative definite you can easily verify it. The Hessian matrix is because of this negative sign this matrix is negative definite. And uh, uh, this shows that log likelihood is globally concave. And then for obtaining the maximum likelihood estimator, you can apply the Newton method which converges to the maximum. You can even use lasso or ridge for locket model. Of course, here I am not going into much details, but for lasso and this solutions, say for lasso solution you have to minimize this quantity minus log likelihood plus lambda times you take this L1 penalty here and for ridge you take minus log L plus then you have L2 penalty here. Then we define some measures of goodness of fit of the model. So, a Pearson goodness of fit statistic is chi square equal to summation over i y i minus n p i hat whole square upon n p i hat 1 minus p i hat. So, this is Pearson goodness of fit statistic or you can also use deviance statistic which is g square equal to this quantity. So, you can use these statistics to measure the goodness of fit of the model. Then under the null hypothesis that the logit model fits the data, both of these statistics follow chi square distribution with n minus k minus 1 degrees of freedoms. Similarly, we may consider the probit model in which y i star is your latent variable such that y i star is equal to x i transpose beta plus u i and then we observe dummy variable because this variable is unobservable. It is just like the desire to own a car, you cannot measure it. So, we replace y i star in place of y i we can observe this kind of dummy variable y i such that y i equal to 1 if y i star is greater than 0 or 0 otherwise. Or you can say y i equal to 1 if the person has a desire to own a car or his desire is greater than 0 and y i equal to 0 if he does not own a car or his desire to own a car is less than 0. Then we assume that u i follows normal distribution normal 0 sigma square u i n and then we define z i equal to 1 upon sigma u u i. So, obviously, z i follows normal 0 1 and then probability that y i equal to 1 is equal to probability y i star is greater than 0 and this probability is equal to probability that u i is greater than minus x i transpose beta and then we divide both sides by sigma u. So, we get the probability that z i is greater than minus sigma u inverse x i transpose beta and uh, this probability is equal to 1 minus probability that z i is less than or equal to minus sigma u inverse x i transpose beta or 1 minus phi minus sigma inverse x i transpose beta. Then because of the symmetry of normal distribution, this is equal to phi sigma u inverse x i transpose beta. Again for estimating the parameters suppose y 1, y 2, y n are n observations, then you can write the likelihood function of the probit model in this form 
say L beta sigma u is equal to product i equal to 1 to n, you have capital phi 1 upon sigma u x i transpose beta to the power y i into 1 minus capital phi 1 upon sigma u x i transpose beta to the power 1 minus y i. And in fact, this likelihood function is a function of sigma u inverse beta. So, on the basis of this likelihood function, you cannot estimate sigma u and beta separately. What you can do is, you can estimate 1 upon sigma u beta using this likelihood function. So, you just write 1 upon sigma u beta equal to say alpha, then you can estimate alpha, but you cannot separately estimate beta and sigma u. Again, the Hessian matrix is negative definite and Newton's method leads to maximum of the log likelihood. So, you can use Newton's method for obtaining the maximum likelihood estimator. Now, again we consider this example of empty cars data. Uh, here your response variable is a m, which is a dichotomous variable and your input variables are C y l number of cylinders H p and W t. So, first we fit a log it model and then we get these estimates for the coefficients in log it model. The interceptor, the regression coefficient corresponding to the number of cylinders C y l the regression coefficient corresponding to H p and W t and then you have corresponding standard errors here z values and these are the p values. Only two values are significant means the p values corresponding to only two regression parameters interceptor and that corresponding to W t are less than 0 0.05. So, at 5 percent level of significance only these two values are significant. Then you get null deviance as well as residual deviance here and uh, this is the value of A i c and uh, for obtaining these maximum likelihood estimators the R package has used are uh, 8 iterations. We have also fitted the probit model for the same problem. Again, these are the estimators for the recreation parameters, they are standard errors, z values and then the corresponding p values. Here also only the intercept and the recreation coefficient corresponding to W t are significant. We also get the null deviance, the residual deviance and the value of A i c. And uh, if you compare the A i c's of two models, then they are almost equal. Of course, uh, A i c of probit model is slightly lower than the log it model. So, the regression technique can be used for the classification purpose also. In this lecture, we have discussed some of the regression models like log it model and probit model, which can be used for this purpose for the classification purpose. In these models, your response variable is a dichotomous variable. Normally, in these models, your response variable is a latent variable which is unobservable, and uh, we replace this uh, latent variable by some dummy variable, and the dummy variable is say dichotomous, and then we fit these models. We have also discussed an example which has been solved using R software. 
So, I am going to stop here. Thank you. Chitwan Lalji, a PhD student of Health Economics under the supervision of Dr. Debian Pakrashi uh, from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, IIT Kanpur. In one of my essays, I am interested in understanding the relationship between consumption of fruits and vegetables and various health indicators. Health indicators, both subjective and objective health indicators like mental health, self-assessed health, various measures of blood pressure and various measures of cholesterol. Uh, measures of blood pressure like systolic and diastolic BP, you have your incidence of high BP, MAP and incidence of high MAP. And as far as cholesterol is concerned, I have tried to concentrate more on total cholesterol, good cholesterol and incidence of high cholesterol. Now before I go on to what have been my major contributions and various policy implications, I would like to briefly tell you about the policy initiatives of WHO and various countries. The WHO, that is the World Health Organization, it started with a campaign of five a day. That is, you should have five portions of fruits and vegetables per day. That would be approximately, you could say, 400 grams of fruits and vegetables. Now, a portion, before we go further, I'll just tell you what exactly is a portion. One portion is equivalent to a medium-sized apple or one small glass of fruit juice, which is approximately 150 milliliters and uh, maybe three teaspoons of vegetables. So, uh, the WHO went with a five a day campaign, which was further taken up by various countries. Countries like UK, Netherlands, Germany, Norway, they adopted the five a day policy, while some went for expansionary dietary policies like France, Australia, Canada, Denmark. So, for example, Australia, it went for go for 2 plus 5 policy in which it said that you should consume five por 2 portions of fruits and 5 portions of vegetables per day. And USA went for a policy of fruits and vegetables, more matters. That is, you must consume more and more fruits and vegetables. Now, irrespect of these expansionary dietary policies and dietary propagations, it has been found that only 28% of women and 25% of men they actually meet the recommended dietary norms of five a, po five a day portion. So, the major contribution of my work is firstly to find an association between fruits and vegetables, whether there exists a relationship between fruits and vegetables and health indicators and if they exist, whether if due to heterogeneity in the data, so I will be doing it according to age, by gender and by uh, your weight. So, apart from that, I will go for policy recommendations in which I, will, I am basically studying uh, how much fruits and vegetables matter, apart from that, which type matters more. So, for that, I have taken data from the Health Survey of England. Health Survey of England is an annual survey which takes uh, data, which con conducts information regularly on demographic and socioeconomic characteristics. You have your lifestyle behaviors like an individual smokes or doesn't smoke, alcohol consumption, you have your sedentary and physical activities and you have various health uh, indicators also which have been collected. Uh, so, uh, before I go on to what exactly is my research, I would like to concentrate more on fruits and vegetables like what kind of questions were asked in the survey. Questions like what kind of fresh fruit do you eat? Did you eat any dried fruit yesterday? Don't count dried fruits in cereals, cakes. Apart from that, for vegetables, they asked how many tablespoons of vegetables did you eat yesterday? So, approximately after this whole survey was conducted, data was converted into portions of fruits and uh, like for example, three, por three tablespoons of vegetables is equal into one portion. So, data was converted and provided to the users, that is us from the UK data health survey. So, the major con contributions of my paper is that I found a strong negative association between uh, intake of fruits and self-assessed health, then various measures of uh, blood pressure like mean arterial pressure, high mean arterial pressure, high blood pressure, systolic and diastolic BP and 
your total cholesterol. Apart from that, I have found a strong positive association between consumption of vegetables and good cholesterol. So, it is recommended in a way that if you want to control your blood pressure, you must consume more and more fruits. And as far as vegetables are concerned, they impact your good cholesterol. Apart from that, I went in for a falsification test. A falsification test is basically conducted to know whether the model that you have adopted and the conclusions that you are drawing are not spurious. So, if uh, a falsification test is done to know, in a way it is tested by seeing an indicator, a health indicator which is not being impacted by your consumption of fruits and vegetables. And then see, we see whether there is significant result or not. If there is no significant result, that means your model is good and your results are non-spurious. So what we did is for falsification test, we took ear complaints and infectious diseases. Now ear complaints like if you are deaf since birth or you have some kind of imbalance body imbalance that is not being impacted by your post consumption of fruits and vegetables and we did find insignificant results. Apart from that infectious diseases like HIV, HIV AIDS etc we found similar insignificant results indicating that our, uh, that our results are not spurious, non spurious. Apart from that we went uh, since there was a, a lot of heterogeneity in the data like uh, by gender, by age and by weight. We, can, we did the regression analysis. We found results which stated that as far as uh, fruits are concerned, it impacts a male's health more than a female's health. So it is basically said a, a man should consume more fruits to impact his health whereas as far as vegetables are concerned, they impact a women's health more. But this has been only seen as far as cholesterol is concerned, the various measures of cholesterol like total cholesterol, good cholesterol and your incidence of getting high cholesterol. Now after this we went in for a policy implication and in the policy implication we found, we tried to find two policy implications, what matters and exactly how much portion matters. So as far as how much portion matters, we have found that on an average, five or more portions of fruits impact your overall health, that is your self-assessed health, your MAP, your incidence of high MAP and incidence of high BP. But if you want to have a good mental health, so you can optimize your mental health by consuming three or four portions of fruits as well. And similarly, has, uh, as far as self-assessed health and total cholesterol is concerned, an individual must consume four to five portions to optimally have the impact of consumption of fruits. Apart from that, vegetables have had a very little impact on your health. It only impacts your incidence of getting high MAP and high BP and uh, you, it's seen that only it impacts when you consume five or more portions of fruits. So an optimum consumption of five or more portions of fruits and vegetables are recommended. But fruits have a more impact on your overall health, on various measures like self-assessed health, mental health, your various measures of blood pressure and various cholesterol levels. Another thing that we find is which type of fruit matters. It has been seen that all size fruits, they impact your self-assessed health, your systolic and diastolic blood pressure, your mean arterial pressure, your high BP and incidence of getting high MAP and high cholesterol. But we find that uh, as far as frozen fruits or canned fruits are concerned, they have a, they help in regulating your incidence of getting high MAP or high BP, but it has a trade off that means there is something negative happening, it reduces the good cholesterol in your body. Apart from this, it, if, you ha if you have an incidence of getting high cholesterol, it is recommended that you must consume fruit juices because it has a si impact in reducing your probability of getting high cholesterol. And uh, dried fruits, they impact your self-assessed health. As far as vegetables are concerned, very little impact has been seen. It has only been seen in case of uh, uh, portion of salads and its association. Composite, they have an association with good cholesterol. So overall, my research basically says between consumption of fruits and vegetables and various health indicators, it is highly recommended that an individual in order to be healthy of fruits and five or more portions of vegetables per day impact on your overall health. Apart from that, all size fruits 
your overall health, your mental health, various measures of blood pressure. So, thank you.